Hi, um, so firstly, I just want to say thank you for having me on here and allowing me to share my story. Um, so my name is Laiba. Um, I'm a mental health advocate. I work with many services like Head Start and the Youth Empowerment Service in Cannes, um, helping to um, shape this service to better support young people. Because many of the reasons why I struggled so bad was that institutions that pride themselves in helping young people were actually failing us massively. And that upset me. And I, I used to think, what can I do to help? And I shared my story on a conference and through that many people started reaching out to me and asking me to come and work for them. So now that's what I currently do. Um, so when I share my story, people often get surprised. Um, and I'll say my age at the end um, because they look at my age and they think you're so young to have experienced so much. And like when I do all these conferences and all these talks, people don't realize that I still have mental health difficulties. They think that I'm better and that's why I'm sharing. But what they don't understand, it took a lot. It takes a lot for someone to come on um, on a platform and to share their story because it takes a lot of courage and a lot of strength um, and stuff. And my aim in life is just to help others. I, I did nothing. I don't focus on anything else but to help others because that's what keeps me going. Um, so when I was six years old, um, by the way, there's a trigger warning all around. There's like a lot of talk about suicide and abuse and stuff. But um, when I was six years old, I witnessed my mom try to end her life and. I remember thinking at the time that this was all normal, that when you feel angry or when you feel upset with life, this is what you do. You try to end your life. You 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 give up easily. Um, and when my mom was taken out of hospital, no one came down and sat me and my siblings down and said to me and my siblings that actually this is not the way to do things. You can ask for help. It's OK to not be OK. You will get help. My mom wasn't given any help. So no one ever from that young age ever corrected our thought processes. Um, and then at age 13, I was diagnosed with complex PTSD, depression and anxiety. And what my therapist said to me at the time and that stuck with me so much was that anything you do now is going to be a result of trauma. Anything you now feel is going to be normal. And I, I started labeling all my difficulties as this is all normal. But actually, it wasn't normal. What The way I was handling things wasn't actually normal. I needed help. And I didn't know how to communicate that because... I come from such a strict conservative family, they didn't believe in mental health. Like, how was I supposed to communicate to my family that their child doesn't feel like living anymore, that their child feels that like this life is just not worth it anymore? How did I, how was I supposed to communicate that? Um, and then the first time I tried to end my life, um, I, I felt like I wasn't going to get better, that I was going to continue having nightmares, I was going to continue feeling low about myself. I didn't see any light at the end of the tunnel um, and stuff. Um, my therapist was very keen on not hospitalizing me because another another weakness that people see as a strength was I had academic. I was very I was getting really good marks at school. I was getting such high grades. They felt like putting me in hospital would bring me down, and I wouldn't be able to achieve those high achieving grades. And I always used to get angry that why was I so academically smart? Because that meant I was mentally very at the time very weak, and I didn't know how to handle my mental health because everyone else was focusing on my um, academics more. Um, and stuff but um, that first suicide attempt became eight times I tried to end my life eight times um, despite being so young I went through these phases where no one was helping me I felt like I was all alone I felt worthless I didn't feel like I had there was no point of living and most of the time it wasn't that I wanted to die I just wanted the pain to end I just wanted to stop feeling so low about myself um, on my eighth time I remember sitting in a room and I was crying and my two-year-old cousin came in and he saw me crying and he went and got my grandparents and he said, Lida's crying. And that for me was such a significant time because he was autistic and he was non-verbal and that was the first words he said was, Lida's crying um, and stuff. And I was um, set, taken into hospital where I was um, put in inpatient unit. I remember sitting on my hospital bed and I was thinking, what am I doing, Lida? Like, what are you doing? Like, you, There's a reason why those eight times haven't worked. There's a reason why you're still here. Um, and stuff and I thought about what can I do now when I get out of here because I don't want to att attempt on my life anymore I want something to live for um, and I started writing poetry I started publishing my poems online and I started people started asking me to write for them and that was my survival tool it, it became a fuel it became what I needed to continue living I started working with all these different organizations I started working very closely with institutions like Cairns and like Head Start helping them improve their service um, and stuff. So I work. I started doing a lot of training for future social workers on how to deal with young people and um, highlight and see signs of non-verbal communication because I didn't feel like everyone could see that um, and stuff. It, sometimes I see it as young people today. They feel like 
they can't talk to anyone about feeling suicidal because there's so much stigma around it. Because an adult will always respond with, look at what you've got, you've got a house over your head, you've got food, you've got money and stuff. But what people don't understand is all of that's fine, but what about happiness? What about all the other things in life that you need to help you carry on going and stuff? Um, and I'm also a peer mentor, so I talk to a lot of young people my own age and I sort of help them to validate their feelings. I sort of guide them into finding all these different support places and one of the things that I've learned not to do is never leave them as in like I know sometimes it can get very hard listening to people's stories and help being there for them but when I do find it hard I don't just leave them I don't just say well it's too much for me now goodbye I can't hear it anymore I sort of do a transitional leave I sort of sample them to more specialist services and so and that's very important to be non-judgmental to listen to someone to understand and not just to reply taking all these different factors into consideration to why a young person might not open up um I would like to end this with something that I always say to the young people that I speak to that to see a rainbow, you need a lot of rain. And all these weaknesses that you find, all these dark places you need, are all the all it's all the stuff that you that that you're gonna go through in life, all this adversity to see that light at the end of the tunnel um and stuff. So it's okay to go through these difficulties and it's okay to feel like your life isn't worth living anymore. But always remember that it's okay to get support at the same time. There's nothing wrong with going to someone and saying that you you feel you feel a certain way. Um, life puts you through like dark places with twists and turns. And sometimes you can see that light, but other times it's too far away. But always remember that it will get better one day. Um, it will just take time and always have that patience in you and find what works for you. Um, thank you.